Hi, Kelsey. Oh, you're muted. Just jumping in to make sure that I have you set as the host so you can share your screen and everything. Oh, uh, yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I will jump out and let you guys get to it. <laughs> All right, thank you. And don't worry, Sarah, I don't think we're the only two. We have quite a few people who've signed up, so. <laughs> okay, get a little nervous there. Right, now this is not a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. You don't have to worry. I mean, it'd be fine if it was, but um, I know there's there's more folks who are supposed to be coming. So I usually jump on a little early just to make sure the technology's working and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just chill until you know, around three and then maybe give it another minute or two and, and then we'll get going. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks. Hi, everybody. I think we have about 17 people who signed up for this. So we'll just kind of um, give it another minute or two. Um, I know sometimes just logging in and making sure we're all in the same space can take a minute and we're coming from other meetings. So um, I don't want to get going too much until a few more people pop in. So in about a minute or two, we'll get started.
Okay, I think we're going to get started. We only have an hour together. Um, sometimes I've done this for an hour and a half or so, so um, I, I'm sure we can get through everything, and a lot of it depends on how many questions you have. So my name is Carrie Hamity. I am faculty in food and nutrition. I'm also a faculty affiliate with the CFE. Um, I've been doing this um, Canvas workshop for about a year and a half now, um, and a big interest came, you know, during the pandemic when a lot of people had to put their classes online. Um, and so we thought it'd be good to, you know, offer this for new folks and graduate students. So um, I'd like for each of you, I will call your name so we're not like going who hasn't gone, who, who has. Um, as, as we go through, I'd like each of you to introduce yourself and um, just say maybe what department you're in and um, what your experience is like, is this your first Canvas thing or you're just looking to get it more organized or what? So I'm going to start with, um, is it Abbas, A-B-B-A-S? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Hi. Uh, I'm uh, about science. I just arrived two days ago, so I told you to come. But... So you're breaking up a little bit for me. I'm wondering if um, you want to type in maybe your name into the chat. Uh, my name is as a yes. I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear him? Is it me? No. So we'll we'll just move on to somebody else, and then if you want to type your stuff, in, I can I can read it. To the okay. Then the next person on the list I have is is it Fei F E I. Or fee song, fee song, song. Are you there? Oh, sorry, I am using a new computer. Oh, no microphone. Okay, we're doing great today on technology. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, so please, I apologize. But uh, fi Firar or Fiery? I'm not sure. Okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Freu. Freu. Okay. Yeah, uh, just some uh, department of chemistry. And I've been using Canvas for grading purpose at BGSU. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully we'll learn something new today. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Francis Franziska? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello, I'm uh, Francisca Schulz. Yes, nice meeting you. Um, I'm in the political science department and I start this fall at BGSU as assistant professor. So nice meeting everyone. And I've worked with Canvas since 2020, but I might um, need some more tricks and some refreshment too. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Heather? Hi, um, I'm Heather Claussen. I'm in the education department at um, the Firelands campus. Um, and this is also my first year at Bowling Green. And so um, I've done the trainings that have been offered so far and just learning how to navigate it. All right, great. Thank you and welcome. Um, James? James, I see you unmuted, but we can't hear you. Can you type anything in the chat and let us know? I can't, yeah, I can't see James and I can't hear you. So maybe, um, hopefully you can hear us. If you wanna type something in the chat, that would be great. Uh, Matt. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Matt Webb, and I work in the College of Education and Human Development on main campus. And uh, 
I've taught before, but it's uh, I, I just got tapped to teach a, a course for pathway students, and uh, it's been a few years. Uh, so I'm getting some quick refreshers on Canvas, especially setting up modules, maybe, and the syllabus and the grading. And I saw the new tool for attendance, which this is a, in this course, we take attendance. So I want to double check how that it looks really easy, but that's <laughs> all. I'm here for refreshers. Hi, Carrie. And uh, hi, Matt. Thank you. Um, M. Zuki, and I know your first name is, I saw it on the roster, but now I don't remember. Mariella. Mariella. Oh, Mariella. I, I was like, Mary Ellen, something like that. Okay. Mariella Zuki Bingman. I'm an uh, instructor of Italian at the World uh, Cultures and Languages Department. And I've been using Canvas a lot, but I always like to learn uh, new tricks and refresh a little bit. All right, great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Sarah? Hi, um, I'm Sarah, and I am a graduate assistant at, in the Health and Human Service Building, so Criminal Justice Department. Um, I've been a TA for about a year now, and I'm just trying to expand my horizons and what I can learn. <laughs> Very good. We're in the same building, so welcome. Um, Susie? Hi, Carrie. Good to see Hi. you. Hi. Hey, good to see you, too. Um, so my name is Susie Saunders O'Haran. I work in the Office of Human Resources, and I'm interested in this course because um, Carrie actually was a part of our Leadership Academy last year and something that we're looking at implementing um, a Canvas course shell in. So I'd like to learn a little bit more about Canvas so that we can launch that for the new cohort. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Todd? Yes, uh, Todd Kramer. I'm new to BGSU, um, part of the School of Educational Foundations Leadership and Policy. I've used Blackboard, but I've never used Canvas. So I've spent a lot much of today uh, putting together uh, some shells for courses and just looking to learn more and learn from all those that are here who have some experience. Awesome. Well, welcome. I'm a graduate of that doctoral program. So welcome to that. Um, and welcome to all of you. So today is, I'm, I'm going to run through, I don't have tons of slides to share. A lot of it's going to be interactive and kind of showing you how to set things up in Canvas. Um, I'm not saying that this is the, the perfect way to do things, um, but I've been using Canvas since they said, hey, let's pilot this. So I've been doing it for a long time. And I get students and they tell me, I really like the way your Canvas shell is organized. So just from that student feedback, I, I said, especially during the pandemic, I was like, hey, I'm happy to help wherever I can. So that's kind of where we're going to start um, today is uh, looking at some of those things. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, when I do that, um, can you all see my, my thing? Okay. Um, I can't always see your faces when I'm doing this. So um, I want to make sure that if anything happens, um, just like, oh, where did everybody go? I totally lost, oh, that's weird. <laughs> My computer is like saying, I don't like what's going on right now. Um, okay, I think let's try this again. Play from the start. We are technologically not in a good way today, I think. There we go. Um, oh, okay, that's gone. Do you see the duplicate slides or do you just see one slide? One slide, okay, good, all right. This is what happens when you have like your computer plugged in one place and your monitor in another. But just shout out if you need anything um, because I might not always see you raise your hand or something when we're in this. So at any time, if you have a question, just please let me know. Okay, so the objectives for today are, I'm hoping by the end of this session, you'll be able to design a Canvas course that your students feel they can navigate easily and efficiently, um, create some weekly modules that are detailed and organized, and then link your syllabus to the Canvas to-do list and gradebook for the entire semester. So really kind of looking at structurally, how can we make this 
um, as organized and efficient as possible. In the past, I've had faculty say to me, oh, isn't that like holding people's hands when we do that? I don't feel like that. You know, when I come into a work environment, I, I think it's important to manage those expectations. Here's what you're going to do. Here's where you find it. Um, and I, I just have everything organized. So I feel um, I don't get a lot of student emails saying, I don't know where this is. I don't know what to do um, because of the organization. So uh, some starting points to think about, and I, I think this first one is really, really important, is identifying what your learning objectives are for the course. I just, I, I attended something the other day, I don't remember what it was. They said, identify your learning objectives and then move one, remove one or two, <laughs> because you're probably trying to do maybe too much in your course. Now, some of us don't have that option. Um, I'm in an accredited program, so, right, I have to uh, cover certain things. But you really want to think about to help the students um, conceptualize how you've laid this out. What is the learning objective and what's the assessment that I'm going to do or assignment or quiz or test that links to it? And how does this help me at the end of the course move on to other courses or be successful in life, whatever. But to really get the students engaged, they need to understand why am I here and why are we doing these things? And then you want to have a complete syllabus with every single assignment ready to go, all your due dates and, and linking all of those things. So I'll show you when we get into one of my Canvas shells uh, what that looks like and how that helps our students um, prepare for the semester. Because a lot of our students are working anywhere from one to three jobs to help pay for their education. And so if they know ahead of time Here's all the assignments that I have to do. Here's when they're due. It helps them plan um, around their work schedules and other classes too. So there's no big surprises. And then I also like to establish uh, routine due dates. So it's like everything's due Friday at noon or you know, when you do a quiz, it's, it's due at this time. Um, that way it's not like, oh, I've got three assignments on three different days. And um, you know, I hear students say, oh, the professor changed this again or added this. And it, it really is um, kind of a, a disservice to the students. I, I think if any of us have been teaching at all, we realize the last few years have been hard on students and they're trying to get back into the swing of things. Some, if, if they're first uh, uh, semester students, maybe they've been in online schooling for the last three years. So to really be able to give them some continuity really helps um, achieve those things in the classroom. So some of the things we're gonna talk about today are um, the student navigation of the course, the syllabus tab, um, and then designing your modules. So I, I think this is um, our, the key areas of Canvas for me. Um, I don't give my students um, access to many tabs on the side of Canvas. So this next slide will kind of show you, um, when you wanna do student navigation, this is in the settings tab, um, and you go to navigation right here, and you will determine what do the students really need access to. Um, I would not give them access to your files. I always put that definitely so when you're in Canvas, and I'll show you this when we get into Canvas, but you would like click on one of these and then you would drag it below this line. So, oops. Somehow I went ahead of my game here. Um, it, where it says drag items here to hide them from students. And then you see here where all these little eyes are with the dashes through them. That means the students can't see those things. So you'll see that I don't let them have access to quizzes, to files, to discussions, to assignments, or any of those things, um, because I have them all linked within my module pages. So when we get to that section, you'll see I have everything every week. Here's the module for the week, and here's everything you need. So students don't have to sit there and click and go, where was that? Where do I need to find it? Anything like that. So I pretty much drag most everything below the line and just give them access to my homepage, the syllabus, the modules, grades, other people, that kind of stuff. Um, 
Does anybody have any questions about navigation? Okay, so for the syllabus tab, um, I put in a copy of the syllabus, which you can see right here is the PDF of it. But then underneath that, on day one, they can see every single um, assignment, what day it's due and what time it's due. So it's right here in, in Canvas, and then that way it pops up in their to-do list on Canvas. So when you're setting these things in there, it's also a prompt for the students, and it's also a prompt for you to see to go in and grade once they've submitted things too. Um, and so I have a lot of things. If it's a quiz, it's due during class time. If it's an assignment, it's, it's due like at night or something like that. Um, and, and so I try to be very consistent with my timeframes for folks so that they know exactly when things are due excuse me. Um, but all of that is right there in that syllabus tab and they can see everything from day one. And then we go into modules. And I think this is really the, the core of, of what how to organize things really well. And like I said, we're going to go into my actual class shells and I'm going to show you this instead of just showing it to you on, um, on a slide that I can't click on and so forth. But here I have two different ways of doing um, modules. This one on, on the left is week by week. So I'll have week one, here's what you do. And then this one is topic by topic. So this one's for a seminar class that I teach and we might be on a topic for a couple of weeks or something. And this one is um, my nutrition care process class and um, it can have a different, um, or this is my advanced clinical. We have a different topic almost every week. So I put in there week by week, they can look and see, okay, that was in week three. I go back to week three and I find it. Or in this class, okay, we're talking about end of life ethics. That's where I need to find um, that module. And I'll show you the insides of the modules in just a minute. Um, if you're not familiar with Canvas, um, this is kind of how to set up the module. And I use pages for every module. Um, and I, instead of just listing everything in, in the module, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. But um, when you do this, you can go to the pages tab in Canvas and click on view all pages. And then at the top, you do plus page, and that's how you add a page. Um, and then you can put all your content in there, save it, and then you go back to your module, whether it's week one, end of life ethics, whatever, and you create that module by doing the same thing, plus module. And then to add your page, you can click on the little plus sign, um, and then a new box will open up, and from that drop down, you'll select pages and then you'll add the page that you just created. And I know I'm kind of talking about this quickly, but I will go in and show you um, how to do it as well. Then this is what my Canvas page looks like, okay? Um, so I start out, so this is one that's um, topic oriented and not week oriented. So I'll have the title there, and then I always have three sections on every page. What are the goals for this? Um, if it's a week, I might say Monday, we're doing this. Wednesday, we're doing this. Friday, we're doing this. And then here's the resources that you need for this module. And then here's the assignment. So now you can see, I don't need to give them access to a discussion board, to an assignment, because I'm going to have it right here. So when it's time, you know, complete the following career uh, planning worksheet, they just click on it. There's the document. Then when you're done, you're going to upload it here. So they have everything they need for that module in one place. And they're not hopping from place to place to place. Does anybody have any questions about that? Where do they upload it when they're done? So right here where it says professionalism reflection form, that's a link to the assignment. And I can show you in Canvas how to do that. And then when they're done, where do they upload it? 
right here. This, so this is the actual assignment tab where they will upload their work. Under outcomes? Um, am I right here where I'm circling? Do you see this orange where it says uh, professionalism reflection form? Oh, uh, it says outcomes in my screen. Oh. What you're circling. Yeah, well, what you're circling doesn't usually correspond to what you're talking oh. about, just so you know. Maybe it's a matter of the screen being not in sync. Oh, that could I be. I know that when you were talking, you were saying this is an assignment and then they will upload it. And, uh, and my question is, do they upload it to this uh, module, to this play page or? Yeah, I, um, I'll show you, because on my screen, it shows that I'm circling the assignment, but we're gonna go okay. into Canvas now and I can show you. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm going to share my, um, course shell. And I'm going to show you um, one thing first and then another. Um, where are we at? Here we are. Okay, can everybody see this? So right now we're looking at uh, a Canvas page. So some of you might create modules and you just kind of put the documents in it. And that's what this is here. So this is just our like department, but you can see um, this is the module and then there's just forms underneath it. And I've seen a lot of professors who do their um, shells that way. I've taken classes with shells that way and I find it confusing. It's just the way my brain works. But for some people, maybe just list, listing um, documents in order makes sense. But for my class, what I do is um, when you first come on it, I have a home page, and this tells the students this is all about the class that you need to know. Um, here are you know to access information. We're going to use modules every week and I explain what that's going to look like. Um, so here here's my modules page, and this is done week by week. So I've got a different page for every week. So I only usually have one tab kind of underneath every week for this course. So when I click on this course and it says agenda for the week, here's what we're going to do on Tuesday. Here's what we're going to do on Thursday. Here are the resources that you need. And then this one doesn't have an assignment, but let's say I wanted to add an assignment here. So my computer's a little slow. So once it loads, there we go. I could go here and I could type, please upload your assignment here. And then to get those links to your assignments, because I don't give them access to assignments on the left, you come up here to this link sign and you go to course links and here's every link within your course so you could put a link to another page to an assignment to a quiz whatever so if i want to do an assignment i'll say i'll choose this one i'll close that out and then when i hit save Now, when students go to that page, if I had an assignment for that week, they would click on this and that takes them right here to the assignment upload and they can upload their submission here. Does that make sense? My computer's slow today. So every week will look like that. It'll have an agenda. Um, it looks like we obviously had a blizzard this day and I wasn't coming to class. So I made some adjustment blizzard changes. Watch these videos. Um, and then they had the resources that they needed. 
And then here's the lab values quiz that they had to take. And so they click on this quiz and they go right to the quiz. They click on this link and go right to it. Um, so everything is right there. Um, and I don't use um, announcements as a result because I put everything here on the page for that week. So it's like here, um, Blizzard changes. So we must have canceled class. I'd probably send an email to the whole group and say, you know, it's snowing outside. We can't be here today. Look inside the module for the makeup work that we're going to have in place of it. Um, so that's how, and every week, that's how um, I would organize that. Um, so this is kind of like what that slide looked like that I showed you. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I have them, here's the course syllabus. And then if they forget, oh, what week was that assignment due in when we had to do that chart review, they can always come back to the syllabus tab and click on that assignment and it takes it right there to them. So they have two ways to access assignments, either through that syllabus tab or within the module. But sometimes they forgot what module the assignment was in. Um, and then that way they can link to everything here on the syllabus. Now you might say to yourself, but yeah, I don't want them to access quizzes early or anything like that. You can still set up all of these assignments and just when you're setting them up, um, like for this estimating quiz need, you'll see, I didn't make it available until January 27th. Um, they did it in class. So it was only available during class time. So even though they have access to those links, they can't really get into them because I've only made them available to the student during the times that I want them to be available. Um, and for most assignments, um, I might have them available, but it'll say see module for details about this assignment. So they can't like jump ahead. They can't be doing other assignments until one, you've either released the module or two, um, you've released the quiz or the assignment or something like that. So does anybody have questions about? Do you usually release the modules at different times during the semester? Yeah, so I, um, I, I don't know that I did it here, but you can go in and you can, um, like if you hit edit, you can do this lock until, and you can go into any of them, you hit that little lock, and then you schedule what day they're gonna open up. And then like I might put August 3rd and then update module. Oh, I, I guess I can't lock it because this isn't an active class. Uh, but then right next to the module and what the students will see, it'll say this module's locked until this day. So like when I teach in the summer, I put that on all my modules so that every Monday morning at 6 a.m. they open up automatically. In, in the fall and spring, I don't always do that, but sometimes I do. Thank you. Uh -huh. I, and when the, when the semester starts, I don't have hardly any modules open because again, if they start working ahead, it's going to be all these questions about a future assignment and, oh, I read this in this module and it's like, ah, oh, we don't need to go over that right now. So I, I leave that off, but you can see here for this class. I don't use announcements in my class. I'm not saying whether that's a good or a bad thing. Um, I put things within my modules and then I send emails through Canvas to the class. Um, all of those announcements, um, I don't know. That to me in my brain gets cluttered and then I see all these announcements and I don't know what to do with them. So I put those down here for the things. So, if you look in settings, this is what I was talking about earlier. You can go here to this navigation tab. And if for some reason I didn't want the students to be able to chat, I could just drag that down here. 
And then once you get everything in this space of what you want hidden, then you hit save. And then it'll um, do that for you. So I'm just gonna move chat back up here. And then you hit save. And then it should be fine over here on your navigation bar. But like I said, I don't give them, like the students just can't go in and see assignments um, or files or anything like that so that they can get into things that um, I don't want them, you know, to either alter or um, get ahead of, of, of schedule. So I put all of that down here below. All right. Does any, how are other people, are you doing your, oh, how do you publish your grades within your method using the modules? So the gradebook has changed a little bit for those of you who have used Canvas in the past. Um, it used to be when you would go in and, oh, I'm gonna have students in here. I will speak. Um, I should go to, oh, did they already take the names out? No, I should go here. Um, there we go. So this one will still have names in it, but it won't have um, any grades in there. You, you used to be able to, when you would go in to an assignment and you'd hit like speed grader or something, you could hide your grades until you were done. So if you click on your thing and you would go, I don't have any in here, but when you go into speed grader, you used to just be able to click this little eye and it would hide all your grades while you were doing them. Now you need to go into the grade book and set it up a different way. So I usually hide grades while I'm doing them. I don't like to like give a grade to one person and another person doesn't have a grade. So you have to go in here and um, go to grade posting policy and do manual. If they're automatic, that'll make it hard. Um, then you can't hide the grades when you do it. So if it's manual, that's good. It won't let me save it. Um, then you should be able to hide the grades in speed grader. And then you just come back here after everybody's graded. And um, like right here where it's grayed out, it says no grades to post. It'll say post grades. And then you can go in and do it that way. Francisca, does that answer your question? Okay, great. Um, but it is a little bit different now. If you've used Canvas before, um, you wanna make sure that your grades are in manual uh, so that you can hide them. If they're in automatic, you won't be able to hide your grades at all. And you know, at any time you can go into the student view on your Canvas shell, if you're like, oh, did I do that the right way? Did I not do it the right way? Um, and like now I can, so you can see over here, this is all that the student has access to are these tabs over here. And then over here is telling them all the things that are coming up for the next few weeks actually. Um, so that's all showing up in their to-do list. And then for the first day of class, the only um, things that I give them access to um, which I don't know why this, I have to take this out. And this is why I go into student view to see what do the students have access to. Um, and right now on the first day of class really, or I, I usually publish my um, courses like on Friday before classes start and I send a little welcome note um, and everything. And then this is usually the only thing they have access to. And then on day one, I'll do 
week one or topic one, whatever I've decided. So this is really good to use that student view. And then that way you can see what, what are they seeing to make sure you didn't post something you didn't want to. Then you just click leave student view. And now I know that I had something extra there on my resources that I don't want them to see. So I've unpublished that page and now they just have the resources module that I had uh, before. And I can go back in if I want to and I can double check. Okay, good, that page is removed now from uh, their module because that was probably something just for that classroom that I was doing last year. But so all of my courses are set up this way and it's really helpful for students like in the FN program, um, a lot of us do things similarly. And so students come into class, it kind of gives them a little bit of organization. They understand what the expectations are and they know where to go um, with things. Does anybody else have any questions at this point? And feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat um, if you want. All right, I'm gonna, well, I'll leave this up just in case. Does anybody wanna share? Um, do they have any other things that you do that you think might help organize this? Or are you just processing and thinking of what you're gonna do to your course shell? Um, you know, feel free to share with us um, if you have some ideas too for your course shell. Did I lose everybody? There's no cameras on. I'm here. I, I'm just processing everything. Sorry, I'm gonna start my video. Um, I The courses I'm teaching were taught previously. And so those instructors have shared their shells with me. Um, and so in the interest of time, right now, I'm just trying to use what is there and then make notes for as I um, move on. So this is similar to how it's been set up. The only difference is on their shells, instead of just one link, it has all of the things for that week listed under that, you know, week one or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure it's hard if you have an existing shell, you know, um, and right. class you're going to teach again, that you can put some ownership on. It's hard when you teach a different class every semester um to kind of readjust all of those things and mm -hmm. you know i think in that respect if you just really have a good syllabus and all the um assignments put in there on day one you can always adjust those pages as you go along if you want to too um i think it's harder when you just have all those documents listed there's no like instructions that go along with it um as right. far as What's our agenda for the week? What does all of this material mean? Um, but hopefully you'll teach that class again and you can put some hopefully <laughs> of your own stamp on there. Yeah. Did you thank you. Yeah, thank you. I had a quick question, Carrie, about the when I click, when I'm looking at setting up my class and I click the syllabus page. I've, I've uploaded the syllabus to the files, but it looked like when I clicked the syllabus page, it, it didn't want to make it as easy as just copy that file into it. It's like almost like it wanted to edit and type everything in. Oh, again. yeah, that's a good question. Let me share my screen again on that because it is a little different. So when you go into the syllabus tab, it has like two parts to it. So you have this part up here and you have to click the edit button. And now here I say, here's a copy of the syllabus. So that's just 20, I'm, I'm still working on my shells. They're not hundred percent ready. So then I would put the document here. So then I'm gonna go to this paper thing. Uh -huh. And if, if you've uploaded it in there, then you would say course documents. And then you could go in there and then 
hopefully find it. You can search if you know the title of it, that goes a lot faster. But let's say that, you know, this is my syllabus, then I click on it, there it is. Now, if you wanna put a new file in there, um, like upload document, all you have to do is, you know, drag and drop. So I've just dragged this off my desktop. I don't even know what it is. Guide to Teaching Food Literacy and hit submit. Now that is in your files and it's here where you want it to. So you can save yourself a step if you want to and not upload everything to your files first. As you create these things, you can just drag and drop it and then it's automatically in your files. And then once you do that, you hit update syllabus, and now those things are there. To get the second part in, you have to manually put every assignment into the assignment tab, and then it auto populates into this. Does that help? That does. All right, so I'm just going to erase these while I'm thinking about it. Um, and then you can go in like here, hopefully, you see I have this quiz one, when the students go in, um, I don't have it available till September 29th. So they can't, even though it's on that syllabus tab, they can't access it because it's not available to them. And I'll go through and I, um, that's one thing that I do too, just to double check that all my links are working, is I go into the student view and I go into syllabus and I'll click on those just to make sure, I'll click on scavenger hunt and then it says this quiz is locked. So that's what the student sees. And then that way I know I they don't have access to anything I don't want them to have access to. But, they have all the due dates and all the times right there. It's auto-populating in their to-do list. They can plan. I don't know about your students, but dietetic students seem to be a little bit more on the type A side. So they like to you know, write down every assignment on in their little notebooks or put it in their phones. And then they have everything for the semester and they'll color code every class, right? Um, but then this way they know how to plan for all of their, um, assignments and so forth. So that's a good question. Does anybody else have any questions about, I'll get out of that so we can see each other's faces, um, the process or, or how kind of that formula works from creating that page? I didn't really show that. Is everybody familiar on how to create pages? Sarah, are you familiar with how to make pages? It's fine. It's fine if you don't. Um, so when you go in to this, am I still in student view? Yeah, leave student view. So in order to create all of these pages that I have in each week, you come down to pages and I even have one of my pages is my home screen. So see how this says front page? I've designated that page as my front page. So you go to all, all pages. And you can see here, I've got quite a few pages. Um, but you just hit this plus page. You give it a title. And it's like Canvas 101. And then that's where I start building. And this is just like a Word document. Um, and I'll do agenda and then I'll come down here and you can see, you can I can bold this. I usually bold and underline each section. And then um, sometimes I'll do, this is like the font color. So I'll say, I always put my dates if I do it um, week by week, I always put them in red. Um, and then I'll switch back to black and I'll say, today we are you know, doing this. Um, and then I'll go down and we've got resources. Oops, somehow I got back to red. So I can just come back up here. I turn it to black. 
this one's the highlighter. Um, this is if you want a superscript. So it's just like using a Word doc. Um, if you want to put a link in here, so if it's an external link, you click external link and it'll say, okay, what text do you want? And um, so you can see here, I've got different things, but let's say I put in here Canvas tutorial. And then here, I'm just gonna put, you know, a link, whatever link that is that I have, and then it's done. So now this is a hot link here. And when the students come in, you can say, hey, I need you to watch this Canvas tutorial um, on before class or whatever. So that's there. Um, and again, I'm gonna bold underline because I, I like things that are routine. And then, um, oops. Done here would be assignments. And again, you can come to this link page and now it's a course link. And I could, you know, say for the assignment, go to, you know, the mentoring page um, to see what you need to do. And then I, I, I could link the page right here in, in there for the students. So a lot of times I'll say, oops, you can't add after you've done that. Always put your text in first because then it goes in with the thing. So like, please review this page before next class. And then I could go like this and now um, that'll take them right there. So when I save the page, this should link out to that website and here it's going to a different page. And I'll, I'll tell you, when you do your modules that look like this and you put links to external sources, it's my experience that they don't work very well. Even though it's something that you can do, um, it's one of those things that I just don't think works very well. And then here, if I want them to go to that other page, they link on this and it takes them to the mentoring program page. So you can link all kinds of things within your course, whether it's assignments, other pages, quizzes, whatever, um, just by using that tool. So then the page is created, and then I come here to modules, and if I wanna add a page here, I'll click this plus sign, and you can see, it gives you, do I wanna add an assignment, a quiz, a file, an external URL? I always add pages. Now, here's the page we just created, Canvas 101. I just click on it, add item. Now I've got two different things for them. As I said before, I usually only have one page per week or per module, but like, here you see resources for Edith's talk. So when Edith comes to class and in this one, I have a bunch of links that they can go to for the articles that they need to read. So this was when we were in a breakout room. So breakout rooms one and five, we're gonna look at this link. Two and six, we're gonna go to this link um, and that type of thing. So I might have a separate page for things I don't want them to see before they come to class. And then when they come to class, I'll publish that um, uh, page within that module and then they can see what's going on. So you, you can, if you open a module, you'll see automatically both pages will publish as well. So you wanna, okay, I don't want them to see either stuff right away, so I'll unpublish it. So that's how I go in and I build all of those pages. And you'll just see from like week to week, everything looks the same. Here's what our agenda is. This week we didn't have any uh, resources because we were doing some things in class. And then for the assignment, here's how you do it. Next week, they come in. Oh, this is one of those things I show them in class. Um, 
same thing, agenda. Here's what we're doing every single day. And then I had no assignment because they were working on some things. So each week you can see, oh, this is an extra resource. They come in, they know what to expect. And hopefully um, they're reading it. Every once in a while they'll be like, what are we doing in class on Friday? I'm like, I send the module. I show you the module at the beginning of every class. So even if you're not opening it, uh, you should see it then. Um, and the same thing to add a module, just like we did with this Canvas 101. And I'm going to remove that. Okay. But if I want to add a module that says like, welcome to class. And they always put it at the bottom. So that's where you'll find it. And then, so sometimes I do this with some, like my online classes and I'll have a discussion board where everybody, you know, tells us about our, themselves. So here's the welcome to class. And then I'm gonna go say, okay, where's that page I just created, Canvas 101. And now I've got this module ready to go. And then once you hit publish, it'll publish those things. So hopefully that's a little bit um, walking through it gives you a little bit more understanding of how to set those those pages up. What are the crazy thoughts going through your head right now? I can't do this. I will do this. This doesn't help at all. I think that helped. Uh I picked up a couple reminders and tips. So thank you. I think I'm ready to go get it all set up before school starts. And you Thanks, can Perry. Right? <laughs> what what other thank you, Susie? What other like was there something I didn't cover that you were like, okay, how, but how do you do this or that that I might have missed? I have a question, but I don't know if it enters into the into the workshop today. But when I taught substituting for a Spanish class last semester, uh, the Canvas was linked with the online program of the textbook. And so all the activities that had been assigned, because it's in, with languages, instead of having big assignments with research and stuff, we have um, practice activities to do just in a few minutes, but you do 20 of them. And so what happened with this linking of the program with Canvas is that every single activity, and there is hundreds of them throughout the semester, would end up in the grade book as an assignment. And it was so cumbersome, so ugly. I just want, wonder if you have a tip. I would like since these assignments are doing do also only at the end of the unit, so they can do it on your own, their own pace. They can do three a day, ten a day, whatever they want, as long as they're done by the end of the unit that we cover in class. That's what I want to be the assignment for that week or two weeks. You know, just a bunch of activities. So I can say two things about that one, and I'm not sure because I think every software does things a little differently. If that external software can package all of those into one unit score that comes into Canvas, I would investigate that with the software folks. But from the student end of things, I, I know this comes across in um, chemistry and some of the other courses, the students um, love it when it's linked into the grade book, into Canvas. I often have students tell me, we're using this outside software and I have a grade there, but I don't have a grade in Canvas. And so I'm not really sure what my grade is right now. So I can see that being very cumbersome and maybe that outer software can link it into modules so that you just get a module grade instead of individual. But like I said, from a student perspective, I think they appreciate that it's in Canvas and they can, their grade. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 
because I know not everybody links it to Canvas and maybe that's just a, a software thing. I don't know. Um, but it does make students anxious when they can't see their grades. <laughs> and then you get lots of emails about that too. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? I'm always happy to like, you know, talk to you. I know sometimes it's like, I got to think about this and make some changes and then maybe follow up. So if you're starting to plan your course, like Matt said, hey, I'm, I'm off and running, but if, if you hit a snag and you're like, how is that again in your, in your shell? Or what did you say about this? Feel free to reach out to me um, at any time about, um, you know, any questions about Canvas. And I'm just putting, I'm just Carrie H is my email. Um, I just put it in the chat for everybody. So if you have any questions, I'm, I'm very happy uh, to help with those things too. All right, any other questions or comments before we go? All right, well, I wish you all luck in your semester. And again, um, feel free to reach out to me or the CFE with any questions uh, that you may have. And hopefully we'll all be ready by next Monday, right? <laughs> all right, take care, everybody. Bye.